VOD Watchers, welcome back to part 36. I hope you enjoyed part 35, which was part one of the epilogue. We got some cool stuff to do tonight, I'm sure. We get to go traverse America as John Marston, who is now outfitted with his Red Dead Redemption 1 outfit, which is a real nice touch. I like that a lot. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for making it all the way to part 36. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, please remember to put a thumbs up on the episode. Leave a comment. I love reading them. I don't respond to all of them, but I do love reading them. Uh, also consider becoming a member uh, or financially supporting the stream through a tip or for buying some merch at drmcmerch.com. It goes a long way to helping with the stream and keeping it going and flowing. It's really great to have you here. Stream's always going to be free, but your financial support is appreciated. And if you do provide financial support while I'm not live, I'd like to use this opportunity to say thank you. So I hope that you enjoy this episode, and let's see what we got. Yeah, the bingo cards are going to be a little bit out of date, I, I reckon. John's... I got to get John a shave, man. John, John's... John, John's got to get some get his facial hair taken care of here. I like John Marston when he's clean shaven. All right, so we have a decision to make. Do I want to go talk to Sadie or do I want to go down to Blackwater and get the bank loan? I think I'm probably going to go talk to Sadie first and just kind of see what's up. She's in Valentine. I have no idea what to expect down in Blackwater, so... Go to Valentine. Let's maybe get a shave. Talk to Sadie. See what she's up to. Maybe she can help me with whatever I need to do in Blackwater. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, shit. I was not ready for that. Crucifer lives. Hey, good girl, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rachel. Pretty sure my horse's name is Rachel. Ah, boy. We are, uh, we're right into it. There's a cougar eating a deer, and I didn't even pay attention to it while I decided to go off the beaten path. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> God. Ooh, baby. Who's this guy? Looking for gold, partner. I ain't seen so much as a fleck round here. <laughs> that right, sir. Well, I'll leave you to it then. I'll leave you to it. I ain't gonna worry much about it. What a beautiful open field to run through here. Yeah, I agree, Capuzel. It's a little, uh, little rough, but it is what it is. We got here. We got ourselves a campfire over here. I feel inclined to check it out. Easy now. Howdy, folks. Campsite. Get lost. Okay. I'm not invited in. I will leave. Also, look at that cougar strike on on John's back. Look at that. Holy shit. Uh boy, this does not seem like the quickest path. I'm gonna I'm gonna divert from what Google's telling me to do. Because I'm one of those people that believes that I can outsmart Google even though I know I can't. Faith is a hell of a thing. Faith in myself relative to Google is not always smart. It's 
screwed me over way more times than it's worked out. It's pretty cool, DL. Try being mauled by a bear? No, I don't think I will. You know, last episode was so story-laden. You gotta have some chaos tonight. Ooh, what do we got? We got ourselves a stranger, chat. Howdy, miss. Scorned lover. All those years chasing her, but she didn't want to do with me. Then she finally says yes. <laughs> what a mistake that was. <laughs> Should have never rushed to get that ring on your finger, Lily May. Never known a more evil woman. Oh, sir. Yeah, so it didn't work out, huh? You know what'll happen. Ooh, yikes. It's woman problems, right? Might be better you spoke to the lady. You know, you remind me of a fella I talked to years ago. I was slinging these pebbles then, too. Miller told me to be a good man and the wife come. Bastard ruined my life. Be seeing you. Well. <laughs> Oops. Hey, look at this. Everybody's convening in one spot. You are a fool and a nuisance, brother. Helen, is this creepy little toad bothering you again? Shall I throw him off? This is getting quite out of hand. Hands? Oh, he doesn't have hands. He's a troll. And that's why we found him here. He escaped from his... Would you tell your talking monkey to go home, please, Helen? He was amusing at first, but now he's really quite tiring. Plus, I do wish they had shaved his palms as well as his face. Be quiet, you hobgoblin. His bottom is bright red, and he mostly eats bananas. You <laughs> Y'all are made for each other at this point. What up, fellas? Sir, <laughs> we need a hand. You, uh, gentlemen enjoying the great outdoors? No, he's still a lizard. Coward, gerbil, mommy's boy. Manatee. Effluent discharge. Milk sop. You already said that. Uh, I did not. <laughs> You're a milk sap. Well, you are all chatter and no testes, dear brother. Helen, I will make you love me if it's the last thing I do. And to prove how suitable I am to make a happy and stable life with, I shall throw myself over the waterfall in just a barrel. And so shall I, just to demonstrate how little your feeble gestures mean, you homunculus. John, please come <laughs> do the honors and make sure we, um, oh, you silly little tapeworm. John's just not even hesitating. Follow not even hesitating. <laughs> I love you. And brother, you're All right, yep, lock him in, John. John's just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. Here you go, boys. Good luck. <laughs> you crazy bastards. <laughs> oh my lord. The fools. The silly fools. I cannot believe they've done it. You can't? It. Uh, come on. Let's go try and find them. Of course you can believe. Are you kidding me? You can't believe they've done this. My ass, Helen. We must at once. Okay, get on your horse. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Let's go find us some idiots.
Whoa, there they are. Oh no, could this be? Have they met their maker? There you are. Acrisius, what have you done? <laughs> Brother, are you there? Acri, <gasps> is that you? <laughs> I've had the wind knocked out of me. <laughs> I thought you were a goner. <laughs> It's a miracle we're alive. <laughs> silly, silly voice. You nearly died. For me. <laughs> She's right. Dear brother, what fools we've been. You're the fool. But a brave one. You might be dense, but you are the noblest man I know. You are a lion. Yeah, bro. You're an earth shaker. Yeah. World. Conqueror! Now. Let's not let anything come between us again. Never. Boys? Uh, I, Good lady, adieu. Bewitch, some other milk sops. We will have none of it. But I, I thought yeah, that... Before this siren calls us to the rocks again, let us away from here. You lead the way, brother. The West awaits. Boys? <laughs> Boys? <sighs> Quite some suitors you picked there. I was trying to stop them from killing themselves. They won't last a week without me. No, probably not. But you'll have an easier time. I guess I will. So long. Ma'am. <laughs> oh, I wasn't trying to lead them on, you know. It was just exciting. The smartest men I knew. With positively the least sense. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how it works. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a great series of uh I mean, yeah, they were interesting. I get it. I mean, whatever. It's not her fault they were doing that dumb shit, though. They were responsible for that. that you, you don't get to pawn that off on her and say that she's the reason you were doing dumb stuff. She wasn't holding the gun to their head doing any of that, though. They might have liked it. Oh, man. I'm glad that they realized that they, at the end of the day, they needed each other in order for themselves to be interesting. Good to know they're, they're gonna be okay. <laughs> I can't believe they survived all those years. Now we find our way to Mrs. Adley. I went on for years, Jason. Years! What a, what a waste of time for all of them. I'm just, I'm glad that they found their redemption. Hey, enough out of use. Stay back from the wagon, sir. Transporting a fugitive. Yeah, I'm not messing with that. I, I, I don't like getting in the middle of those. City of Valentine. The town we terrorized the shit out of is Arthur Morgan. 12.45 p.m., 49 degrees Fahrenheit. Hell is your problem? Hello there. All right, I'm going to get myself a... You're fixing to make me mad. I'm inclined to get myself a shave first, but I don't actually know if it's going to let me do that. 
guessing maybe Sadie says something about it. I actually, you know what? I'm gonna hitch my horse up. What are you waiting for? I'm gonna grab. Grab a pig. Wanna buy something? Holy hell. Thanks. Bye now. That's a lot of papers. I want to read. I want to read at least thirty-seven. I want to see what's been going on here. Thirty-four. Thirty-seven. Panic in nineteen oh seven. All right, let's get some. Uh, let's get some context for. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to somewhere quiet. I want to get some context. For the time period that we're in right now is John. Go sit in the graveyard here for a second. Let's read the... And there's no better place to read a paper than in the graveyard. You know what I'm saying? Man's tropical enemy. Germ of laziness. Hookworm plagues warmer climes. For many years, the lethargy of residents in the south was thought to be due to the germ of laziness. It is now known that the anemia that plagues warmer climes of the United States is the direct result of a parasite that lives in the gut known as hookworm. A major outbreak occurred in 1902 in Cornish mines and in the coal mines of France, Germany, and Belgium. After fiction is quite common, or the affliction is quite common. The worm is half an inch long and its mouth armed with teeth. They latch by the thousands to the inside of the intestines, sucking blood, moving from place to place, and leaving bleeding wounds subject to infection. As to how the affliction takes place, there is by no means unanimity of opinion by medical men. Some think it to occur by penetration of the skin on dirt floors or foul drinking water. Malady is especially a scourge to residents of the Philippines and Puerto Rico, whose president's health and welfare we are now responsible for. Panic of 1907. Stock market crashes. Exchange and free fall economy on edge. Traders and economists are reeling after the stock market continued to collapse this week. Those in banking circles say we are witnessing the largest evaporation of wealth ever recorded. Cries of anguish were heard on the streets of Lower Manhattan as the stock exchange continued to erupt into a frenzy of bankers rushed to find some way to subdue the panic. Some speculate the panic on Wall Street was made to order by big capitalists in order to depress values and allow them to reap a rich harvest when the rise returns. However, some have claimed it foolishness that a banker would will a panic, likening it to a farmer wishing for a drought or a sailor praying for a typhoon. The banker, despite being opulent in wealth, thrives from stability. Bankruptcy claims are being filed by the dozens of large institutions. However, New York banks are protecting the situation by holding money out of circulation. Or however, they are protecting the situation by holding money out of circulation. Congress has already promised to investigate these national banks and review their conduct, though no charges are expected. President Waxman hails progress, discusses canal, immigrants flooding Ellis Island, 1.1 million expected this year, also discusses building Panama Canal. Speaking to a packed crowd in New York, President Thaddeus Waxman announced that this year is set to see the largest number of immigrants ever recorded passing through Ellis Island. The promise of this great land is known far and wide, he said, and over a million immigrants are expected to arrive in New York in 1907, greatly eclipsing previous years. The president also announced that Colonel William Thomas Kirchner would be the chief engineer of the Panama Canal Project, one of the largest construction projects in memory. The project was taken over by the United States from France three years ago amongst high worker mortality rates. It's thought that the American tradition of hard work and architecture superior to that of the French will allow the grand project to be completed on time and below budget. It has been one of the president's main initiatives since he took office after President McAllister's assassination. When asked about the large numbers of people coming to America, Waxman said all immigrants should be required within five years to learn English or leave the country. Jesus. Okay, well, we were doing well there for a minute. 
the miracle of the age. Pre-cut and easy to assemble log homes available at H. Fisher. Easy to build. Those measurements are cutting. Every piece of lumber is numbered for easy assembly. Save 30 to 40% over building for a home from scratch. Cool. New railroad completed. A grand project. Our manifest destiny. Final ties were laid and spikes driven through to complete the Central Union rail line stretching through New Hanover. Passengers will be able to bypass the Grizzlies' roads and Scarlet Meadows, drastically reducing travel time and probably absolutely devastating the economy in those areas. Now with a direct line connecting Cornwall, Kerosene, and Tar to Saint to Saint Denis, freight and commuters will flow fast and freely. The project came with complications, including controversy over missing workers' wages and a land dispute. Representatives from towns such as Van Horn Trading Post and Ansburg say the new line will result in the decline of the towns. Civic Park planners hail the railroad as a new dawning day in American progress and history. Yep. Make your baby happy and plump as a pig. Okay. Jimmy Richards Men Athletic Bicycle Hose. Very durable. Is this a radio miracle? Written dispatches from the coast of Massachusetts report a novel experiment transpired recently. Using an experimental alternator transmitter at Brant Rock, technicians broadcasted radio signals carrying the music from a phonograph record of Handel. The transmission was intended for shipboard radio operators at sea, especially the Navy, who have taken to new technology for daily transmissions of, of time signals and weather reports via Morse code. Scientists working on the radio experiment hail it as a new dawn in entertainment and foresee a day where Bible devotionals and hymns are transmitted into the home for families to enjoy. A sickness spreads. Having heard reports of rampant sickness and disease at Butcher Creek, a Gazette reporter was dispatched to investigate. Away up in Roanoke Ridge in the Kamasa River, Butcher Creek once boomed with business, fur trading, and timber work. Today, it's a very different story. The remains of the small settlement has been overtaken with paranoia. Outsiders are greeted with suspiciousness and sometimes violence. The residents appear to be crippled with sickness, disfiguring them. Our reporter indicates that the people are sad and confused, often ranting the places under a curse and that God has forsaken them. Wow, so they never quite got over that then, huh? Small farms disappearing, swallowed by large cattle interests. A sense of unease and uncertainty has arisen among landowners as a wave of real estate speculation is sweeping through cow country and large cattle outfits are offering large sums for small ranches. Headed by Abel Alberton, or Atherton, Cattle Association seems intent on remaking the West. Having recently acquired Hanging Dog Ranch and a considerable number of acres around Strawberry, property agents from the Laramie Corporation are visiting small farm owners offering large sums under their new economic model. While opponents say a way of life is perishing, others argue that America is a country of progress and those clinging to the homesteader ideal are firmly stuck in the past. Scale, they say, will always win out. Romance novel proves bestseller. Overnight success. Author Leslie DuPont's fourth home proving very successful. The thrilling romance novel Lady of the Manor, published under the pen name Leslie DuPont, is difficult to find in bookshops, owing to its massive popularity, especially among young girls and the elderly. Her novels have arguably been read by more people than anything that has ever been produced by any contemporary writer, although critics dislike her work enormously. Miss DuPont's books are are lurid and steamy and weave tales of lic of licentiousness and thievery, love and deceit, murder and mayhem, lust and despair. It is claimed many of her tales are from the author's own torrid past, although Miss DuPont has never herself commented. It's been alleged that she once consorted with outlaws and gunslingers on the frontier. She has always been unwilling to corroborate these rumors. Interesting. Bounties beware! Langton is hot on the trail. From the words of those he's chased down, James Langton is relentless, cunning, and fearless. The dude. Known for his sizable frame and 10-gallon hat, the bounty hunter from New Austin is the best in the country, running down outlaws and flushing out bandits. The small army now working for him, law enforcement are happy to hand over their dirty work to Langton. 
Plankton and his crew. He captured the Dillard brothers with the help of a pair of twin prostitutes. He killed Ces Cecile Montgomery while he sat trapped on the commode. Sheriff say, Crooks beware, Langton is coming for you. Contamination, water undrinkable, bizarre sickness spreads. Roanoke towns are often plagued with poverty, superstition, and maladies, but after deformities began to appear among residents of rural Butcher Creek, the townspeople say the area may be cursed. Contaminants were found in some, and some accused Roanoke Mountain Fuel Company of fouling the local drinking water, resulting in large goiters, rashes, sores, and psychosis. Symptoms also point to lead poisoning similar to those seen in plumbers and painters, with victims becoming unusually pale and weak. The eponymously named Creek and Elysian Pool are polluted, though residents will not seek action against the mining company and are instead seeking a spiritual solution to their problems. Out of England by Jeremy Gill. Redfin Pickerel. When not entertaining heads of state with the joyful pastime of fishing, I trapeze into backwoods creeks and hollers where I meet the most delightful, simple folk who imbue strong local spirits and gush about redfin pickerel. These uncouth semi-savages claim it to be the best eating fish you can find, and for that matter, the easiest to catch. They're feisty little predators that will attack a piece of cheese, and as one old timer showed me, a piece of red claw. He'd dip it into the creek, the fish would bite, and he'd slug it up onto the bank with a toothless laugh. Happy fishing for those of you with and without the full complement of teeth. Uh, no oil found at Wapiti. Investors allege fraud. Oh, jeez. The oil reserves discovered on land near Wapiti Indian Reservation in 1899 have turned up dry, and all drilling operations have ceased and packed up. There were high hopes for the location following a detailed exploration by the Leland Oil Development Company on behalf of Cornwall Kerosene and Tar, and a number of petroleum outfits had sought to develop it into a well-paying field. Workers flocked to the area, in, the area in anticipation of jobs that would pay as much as 22 cents an hour. The companies sank well after well, coming up empty, with only a minuscule amount of oil being found, not enough to keep operations running. The tribe at the reservation went on the run after a series of attacks on the army, culminating in a bloody battle at the Cornwall Kerosene and Tar Factory around the time news of the oil discovery became known. Many members of the tribe were gunned down in Wyoming, but a few members are believed to have escaped into Canada. It is unknown what will happen to the Indian reservation land moving forward as there are no Indians in the area to relocate there currently. Holy shit. That sucks. Sounds about right, though. Sounds about white, am I right? <clears throat> uh, ba -ba -da -da -ba 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 -ba. All right, I want a haircut. Three, yep. Go. I thought I told you to leave it, Bubba. Oh, boy. I who this little girl thinks she's telling anything to. Uh, enjoy your drink in peace. <laughs> I ain't got no business with you right now. What that mean? For the last time. Leave me alone. Or what? Ooh! Get the hell out of here before she kills us all. You, you. Get out of here. John Marston. It is good to see you. <laughs> I thought I heard a rumor you was alive. Jim Milton, that you? Guess I didn't do a real good job of hiding my identity. <laughs> we didn't uh, hear no. nothing about you. You, you killed a feller up by Roanoke? Sure did. I thought that sounded like you and Abigail and Jack. She? She's fine. <laughs> He was always so kind to me. I'm looking to buy some property. Beecher's Hope, west of Blackwater. I'm kind of a farmer now. <laughs> and you? Oh, you know how it is. Bounties mostly and some other stuff. Good and bad. Are you any interest in bounties? No, uh, I've gone straight. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> oh, 
It's legal. I'm usually. Then, maybe. Come on, then. What? Where are we headed? Strawberry. Got on the run from New York. Good price for him. What'd he do? Rob a bank. With a gun? <laughs> no, with a pan. Ooh. Counting, I think. Sounds easy. Come on, we got a bit of a ride. I know. All right. Your telegram. You said you had something to discuss. I didn't think we'd be chasing down an outlaw. There's something else. What? Micah. Micah? I think so. I heard of someone sounding like him uh, about a year back. Okay. We always say it. If we found him. I know what we said we'd do. That ain't changed. I didn't think I'd see any of you again after you left for the Yukon. Now we came back. Didn't strike it rich, as you can see. But you're a rancher now. I aim to be. Probably why I can't afford it. <laughs> this country's becoming real civilized. Bad folk won't be around for long. So you say, John. always nice like you run into a friend you haven't seen in years and you can talk like you just saw each other yesterday i just i love that kind of camaraderie i think it's awesome i think a lot of us can think of a friend that's like that there we go strawberry back where we busted mike out of jail and the whole thing started Curious to see if they talk about said, Arthur at some point. Feller's name is Nathan Kirk, banker, bald, forty-five. Okay. You head up that way. I'll meet you in a bit. All right, Sadie. Ask around. Howdy, feller. Hmm. Howdy, sir. Excuse me, friend. I'm looking for a Nathan Kirk, fellow from New York. Got any mail for him? Kirk? Kirk? No, not so as I would remember. Curly, I think. Oh, she's a woman. <laughs> Ask in the Welcome Center. Most tourists check in there. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it, sir. The welcome center, eh? There's something to uh, to think about for John here. It happens to many of us. He's staying in the welcome center. What now? You head in there and try to flush him out. I'll go get the horses and then wait here. And grab him if he tries running. Easy enough. Should be. So, so look how easily John slips back into this. John has to be I think, mindful, as many of us would need to be in these moments, that this is going to feel like home. Seeing Sadie, who's somebody familiar, going out on a trip, doing some espionage like this. This is the kind of thing that John knew for a very long time. And having Sadie give instructions, because as we've talked about, John is very much a give me, tell me what to do kind of guy. He's, this is going to be comfortable for him. And if he's really trying to do something new with his life, not only is he going to have to set boundaries with himself and potentially with Sadie and others, he is also going ha to have to lean into the discomfort and anxiety of what it would mean to walk away from type stuff like this because this is comfortable. This is how people get trapped in their old ways of doing things. Because it's familiar. John knows what to anticipate. He 
even though this is chaotic, this is a process that he can just assimilate right into. Getting money the, re the, the legal way and buying a ranch is not something he's used to. It's going to be hard for him, even though we might say conventionally it's easier. So if you're John here, you got to just, you got to be mindful of that. There's going to be some allure to this, especially without having Abigail and Jack around to anchor him a bit. He's just gliding right in. All right. Mr. Bald 40-year-old accountant man. That don't look like him. I reckon maybe he's upstairs. This place ain't changed much at all. Oh, what if we catch this man in a bath? Mr. Kirk! <laughs> Mr. Kirk, you in there? Oh, Who is it? It's just a friend. Just a friend. Come on, open the door. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Open the goddamn door! John, don't escalate there. Calm the guy down. Oh shit. Sadie! Oh, got him. oh shut up. Come on, jump on. Oh shit. We gotta get after him. Remember, All right. we want him alive. Let's go! I know. Oh, he went right. Escalation is not ideal here. De escalation. This guy can afford a nice ass horse, apparently. Where are you going? Shit. The hell, Sadie? Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh. Leave me alone. No. All right, never mind, sir. I'll stop. Just because you asked so nicely. Oh. Are we? No! You're doing well. Holy shit. Just say you want to lawyer up. You don't got to run away like this. No right to do this. Horse getting tired, Bubba? What you got there, bastard? Are you, are you kidding me? Broke the man's back. <laughs> oh my God, I have to start from here. Oh. Mr. Kirk, you in there? Who is it? It's just a friend. Stop. Hey, that's Nathan Kirk. Oh, got him. Oh, shut up. Come on, jump on. Yeah, I did it. I did it. That's what I wanted last time. He went right. All right, Rachel. Stay on. I'll catch up with you. Where are you going? Shit. If only I 
had Sinead. Sinead would have would have been more delicate there. Come on! Oh, got him! Don't ride your horse out. What you got there? Get off me! I'll tie the bastard. Come on! Yeah! Interesting horse. Hey! Hey! Thanks for that, Mr. Kirk. Real fun. <laughs> I'm an innocent man! Hey! Uh, what now? This guy throws his wife money? under the bus. I been paid yet. Hold on to it for me. Need to speak to the bank over in Blackwater. Get a loan for the property. Might make him happy to see I've got a boss. So no, I've got a couple of other leads I could use your help with if you're interested. I'm usually at the saloon in Blackwater. I need money pretty bad, so. I'll come find you. All right. So Sadie's Sadie's doing all right for herself. Come on then. Okay. Man, are we really about to ride the Blackwater? It seems we may just be. I really want to get my hair cut, though. Valentine is... Okay, where am I relative to Val? I'm not that far. No, we're going to run into... Yeah, no, we're going to Blackwater. I'll get my hair cut in Blackwater. whole epilogue is just yep me just looking for a barber i just want to cut john's hair and if there happen to be missions along the way i'll do them howdy sir nope but john's john's gone straight john has gone straight so we're not doing any illegal shit That's right, Skog. That's right. Easy afternoon. I can't believe we're about to go to Blackwater, man. It's wild to think about. like this like mythical place the hunt is over Kill him. whoa whoa partners whoa <laughs> who the hell are these guys
At first, I thought these were natives, and I was like, oh, shit, I don't want to be shooting natives. It doesn't look like that's the case. And he's just got some got some good cash on him. I want to know how much money John needs. Oh, God, we got a storm rolling in. Feels about right. You're a good filly. Look at that. Good night, Jackson. This just feels really foreboding given the fact that we're going to Blackwater and there's a big ass storm coming through. Oh, shit. There's a dead person on this cart. Oh, my God. Probably shouldn't go underneath this tree here. Wow. this cart of just dead people holy shit that's eerie whoa God, look at this horse. Chat, look away. Wait, really? I'm gonna get in trouble for that? I was putting the horse out of its misery, fellas! Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Nobody even gave me a chance to explain myself. I don't regret my decision. 
That horse was effed. Wasn't gonna just let it go. Now it cost me twenty dollars, and since I'm not Mr. Moneybags like Arthur Morgan, that horse that horse needed to be put out of its misery. I certainly wasn't going to take it and rehabilitate it. Uh. Oh, well. All right, folks. Uh, I, I, it wasn't what you thought. I'm just a man looking to make an honest living here in Blackwater. Hello there. Twenty dollar bounty. I mean, I guess I could go pay that off fair and square. Because I am a I'm a good, honest, decent man now. And a good, honest, decent man pays his bounties. Tough as it may be. Hello, what's it to be? Hello, sir. I, uh, you may have heard some folks talking about how they witnessed a man euthanizing a horse and helping the undertaker move people where they should be. And apparently my ass has to pay $20 for that shit. Which I will happily do to keep the law off my back. But please know that I do not regret my decision. I was just trying to help be an honest man. Doesn't seem to work too well for me, sir. You all saw it. You saw it. I was just trying to help the undertaker. And I was just trying to help the veterinarian that was going to have to euthanize that horse. Fuck me, right? This century going to be good for business. I can feel it. Behind oh. you, partner. Oh, back to cause more trouble, are you? Ooh. Sounds like I got a bit of a reputation around these parts. Howdy, feller. Partner. Howdy. Can I help you with your uh, horse? I got space for you if you Man, need to this stuff is like this is expensive as shit now. I I ain't Like I like we gotta stick to apples. We're on we're on a budget. Like, I don't even know. Like, the horse care package, I mean, I, I'm i sorry. I can't afford it. I just needed to just needed to get a couple apples for you. I hope that's okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I hope that's sufficient. Ugh. Not trying to cause a ruckus around here. I got everything from Arthur except his money. Partner? Hello. One of the boats that arrived yesterday had a rat problem. So today Blackwater has a rat problem. Lo que ha cambiado esta ciudad en Ladies! Hola, señor. Caballero. All right. Now, if I'm going to get myself alone, I do believe that I have to make myself appear to be presentable. I suppose things could be better. I'll be cleaning myself up. Come on in. Howdy, sir. I would like 
to clean myself up, please. Okay. And, uh... Hello, sir. You forget what you were doing or something? Worry about your own affairs, my friend. John don't need no pomade. All right, John Marston. Looking good, brother. of you already fellas how do you all do? don't y'all don't like me much do you okay howdy all right let's take a stroll down the beautiful streets of black water it's been a while since we were here it's a mythical town mister Got the saloon here. I would get a drink, but I don't want the bank to smell alcohol on my breath when I go to ask for a loan. Okay. Now showing. Theater. Look at this theater. How about it? That's really something. West Elizabeth Cooperative Bank. This looks like the place. Excuse me, sir. Can I can I help you? Welcome. Howdy, sir. Yeah. I'm looking for Mr. Atherton. I'm a friend of Mr. Getty's over at Pronghorn Ranch. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Atherton is in his office. Hey, please head in. Thank you. Yeah. Guy has a very interesting disposition. Can I help you? I hope so. <clears throat> I want a loan, sir. A line of credit so I can buy some property. What property? An old ranch, Beecher's Hope. That old dump? I, I know it ain't much, but I ain't much of a farmer either. But I will get there. That is a very unusual way of asking for a loan. Mr. Milton. Marston. Marston. Oh. Only folk around here call me Milton. It's kind of a joke, I guess. <laughs> a joke, huh? And which folk? Mr. Geddes. Uh -huh. I work for him. He said that you could help me out. I mean, if you can... So old David Geddes told you I'm the kind of man to loan a man with two names money so he can buy a run-down farm on account of his lack of farming skills, huh? <laughs> Don't sound too promising when you put it like that. <laughs> well, how would you put it? Sorry be to honest. waste your time, sir. Oh, no, John! Well, I'm sure we can John, be honest. Out. Now, of course, we'll be expecting you to make regular payments, and given a lack of much evidence you got any means of repaying, the terms won't be too great. But if my cousin vouches for you, it'll be okay with the bank. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. Nepotism at its finest. Thank you. Now, of course, we'll be expecting our money back regular as clockwork until the debt's settled. Otherwise, the farm reverts to the bank, no matter how much you paid. I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you go check out the land while I fix the contracts and talk to Mr. Geddes? Oh, I heard there's squatters up there. We've been having so many problems recently, they'll need clearing on. Sure. Well, come back when you're done, and we'll fix up the paperwork. All right, John. Yeah. 
No way. I, I, I'm looking for my mate Gavin. Somebody help me. Gav? Gav? I've lost my friend. Somebody help me, please. Now done seeing everything. Howdy, mister. I'm... How do you do? I'm looking for my friend. And Gavin. For Gavin. Has he been gone long? Uh, yeah. A few years. A few bloody years. <laughs> I can't, um... I can't remember what he looks like. <laughs> I'm looking for him, but I don't know who he is. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I've wasted my life. I've wasted my life looking. I looked, but I never saw. I saw nothing. <laughs> Gavin. Good luck. Gavin. Oh, I am so worried. Oh, Gavin. Gav. Gav. Evening. Uh, Gav. Where are you? Where are you? Jeez. Now I have sure Maybe Gavin doesn't want to be found, friend. Maybe. Just maybe. Buenas tardes. The man's not interested. This is really worrying me. Gavin! Oh, shit. So I kind of felt sorry for the guy. I don't feel as sorry for him anymore. I mean, at some point, man, you lose yourself in something like that. Like the guy doesn't even know what he's looking for anymore. It's become about the chase, not even about the find. I mean, whatever it is, this guy has lost himself over a span of years trying to find this guy. Like I would feel, I feel bad for him for a while, but at some at some point. The damage you're doing is being done to yourself, brother. Like, probably... Gavin may not be around. Gavin may not want to be found. Jeez. Holy hell. All right. Let's go, let's go take out some squatters. You better not be looking for more trouble. It could, Joms. Um, it's hard to know. Like, it's a possibility. I'm not. I'm not really ready to say that that guy is, you know, experiencing delusions. But Gavin very well could be real. We have no way of knowing. But it, but yeah, I mean, if Gavin's not real, then yes, absolutely, we could we could get we could start getting on board with that. this who's this feller the blind feller I tell thee now eternity waits for us all but which eternity what help him. oh I ain't falling for that shit again nope 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 I ain't falling for it a you nope for your future a dollar for your fate Have this. They will come for you, Ben. When they do, you will not have a choice. But you have lived better than most. Okay. I guess I'll bear that in mind. Oh, that's, uh... That's a hell of a premonition there, sir. Go out there and become who you are. Uh, Firewolf, he would need to want. He'd want to. He would need to want to be helped. I. There's not a lot I'd be able to do if it's severe psychosis that's out of my scope of expertise.
Whoa, Henri Lemieux is still... What? Seriously? This is the ranch, huh? This week on Fixer Upper, a man turns a small ranch into a small ranch that's maybe a little cleaner if he had the money from the bank to make it happen. Uh, stay tuned. Can I help you, friend? I'm fixing to buy this place, brother. I hope so. Who's in charge here? No one, mister. This is a free country. <laughs> now that I ain't so sure about. Listen, I'm buying this land. I'm afraid... I'm afraid you guys are gonna have to go somewhere else. Who's this? I ain't sure. Really minor, but really cool. John's tone of voice there... Is empathic. He's not angry. He's not being an asshole. I think John le legitimately empathizes with these guys. He understands what it means to squat and to move around. Like that tone of voice was very, very empathetic towards their experience. You're going to have to go somewhere else. Like almost like he feels bad kicking them out. Because he knows what it's like to be on the run. I did, what a cool little detail there. It was really awesome. Some fancy dang city boy says he owns this land. Or he's gonna. Owns it? That's what he says. Okay. And how come we live in here? I ain't sure. Look. Take some money. Go try and find somewhere else to stay. You for real, friend? Sure, take it. <laughs> Are you a real gentleman. Okay, boys, let's go celebrate. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Ah, it's you, the man with two names and no past. Come on in. How'd you make out? Well, let's just say there are no more squatters. Okay. Well, I got your paperwork ready. Now, you sure about buying this place? It's really run down, and the price isn't too great. I think it would mean a lot for my wife. At least mean I was listening to her. Okay. Well, sign here and here. Read it, John. See, this is particularly nasty back in this day because you could put a bunch of legalese in this shit and people wouldn't even be able to read it. And the really scary thing is that in order for people to get these loans, in some ways, they had to act like they could read. Now, John can read, but this is real predatory uh, in a lot of ways because folks would act like they knew what they were signing on to and then didn't, which is... Very similar to how people got caught up in Strauss's stuff. The amount of legalese that's in shit like this, you almost need a lawyer to read any of it because you don't quite know what you're signing up for, and that's by design. Uh, they have all the power and leverage here. You know, this, this is... 
this is brutal. We're on the other side of it now. This is why it was really hard for me to do the Strauss missions and why I didn't finish them. Because it's gross. You got people who are really trying their best. You're trying to make a life for themselves, trying to do right. right. Like John is literally doing this because he doesn't want to resort to murder and pillaging and outlaw them. Like this is literally a chance. Now I understand that the bank has risk. It has to mitigate. I'm not an idiot. But when you are in a position of power, you are accountable for the way in which you wield that power. And predatory loan sharking is a really terrible example. I will never understand in a like empathic way. I understand it, but I don't agree with it. I will never understand people who are really hard on and unempathic toward people who are stuck with having to sign off on stuff like this in order to be able to live their life. Like the amount of people that will jump in and say, well, you signed the contract. Well, you knew what you were getting into. Well, if you didn't like the interest rate, you shouldn't have signed off on it. Are people who are so out of touch with what this process is like. John doesn't have much alternative here if he wants to do this. He is trying his best. This is no different than the modern day person signing off on a student loan. And I, I think there's a huge part of me that empathized with a lot of the people that took money from Strauss because they were just doing what they had to do to get by and to live and to make something of themselves. Loans don't have to be predatory. They can be fair. So I, I, you know, the easy answer is to say, well, John, don't sign the contract. The hard, more reasonable, more progressive answer is to say, hold the banks accountable to fair loans. I understand that you need to have interest rates, but unfair terms and predatory terms are something that need to be regulated. And in this case, they, they aren't. And that is really sad. Blame the system. Hold people in the position of power and the people with leverage accountable. Not the people who are just doing their best. Mm -hmm. oh, hurts. Now we own you, Mr. Marston, and we own Mr. Milton, too, and we own your property. But you can buy your freedom each week. Eventually, you will be a homeowner. I understand. Congratulations. You are now a real American. <laughs> and owned by the bank. <laughs> I'm joking. They own me. He they kidding. just own your property. Now, you can also use this line of credit for any home improvements you need to make, of course. I can? Sure. Be good, Mr. Marston. Welcome to home ownership. It's a beautiful thing. Let your wife know what to complain about. <laughs> Just joking. That is maybe the most well-written sequence of the entire game. Like, that is, that is such... In a, in a tiny little exchange, what a what a beautiful representation of how shit works. That is bravo, Rockstar. <laughs> well, it is you. Well, I never. I I thought you was dead, boy. The hell are you doing here? The very same. Come here. <laughs> I saw you going into the bank, and by the looks of things, you ain't robbed it. I've gone straight. Oh, bull crap. No, for real. <laughs> well. I'm trying. All these years, you ain't changed a bit. Maybe a little bit. I thought you was dead. <laughs> not yet. Well, I got some things to take care no, of. No, not a problem. I'll come too. No, you don't have to. No, I'm real sick, John. 
The lumbago. It's a slow and painful death, my brother. Evidently. <laughs> Have a little pity, will you? Huh? Come on, then. All right. Oh, John. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, man. John is going through the same process that Arthur went through and that so many video game protagonists go through. John has to set and follow through with boundaries. Bring in Uncle along. It's very clear that John doesn't necessarily think it's a good idea, but he breaks his own boundaries. He sets a boundary. He says, no, uncle. Uncle blows past it. John lets him go. A boundary is not a boundary unless you hold firm to the boundary. Maintain it and set consequences. Say no, John. The allure of the old life is always going to be there. It's like alcoholism. It's like when people go sober. Alcohol will be in your life. It will be in the environment. It's very hard to curate a total environment where there's absolutely no alcohol available to you. Full on true advanced sobriety is when you can maintain your sobriety when you are around the substance that you were once beholden to. For John, that means he needs to have the boundaries while he's around the folks that he used to be around some of who may be acting in his best interest, like Sadie, perhaps, some of who, who might not, like Uncle. It's hard to trust Uncle here. And you can see it in John that he is hesitant to do this. It's really hard to establish a new life. I saw somebody in chat ask the question, how do you create a new identity for yourself? How do you move on? It's through boundaries. And John just collapsed on a one that he initially tried to set. He's just, John becomes responsible for the consequences of this. I hope it's fine. I hope it's fine. I'm ready, Marston. Come on. Come on, lady. Follow me. Yeah. John can barely support himself right now. You seem stupid. I don't care how I sing. Well, now where west are we headed, you damn grunting fool? This ranch, I... A ranch I bought just now. Is that what you were doing in the bank? Spending all your money? Oh, I want a ranch in the armpit of West Elizabeth. Oh, my lord. <laughs> Not that that's any of your concern, but... I was in the bank borrowing the money. Well, that's even worse. Yeah, you can run from a bounty, John. You can't run from a bank. Is Abigail there? No. What a beautiful... This is such a beautiful scene because Uncle represents the old way of life. That's the old way of thinking. It is the way of thinking that John is accustomed to. This is why it is dangerous to have Uncle around. John is doing his best to do something new and different, to differentiate himself from the things that he was accustomed to. And Uncle is quite literally in the flesh an example of all the old shit. Literally following John around right now. Not great. And John is initially resistant to it, but again, who you surround yourself by is so important.
is it wrong to let down boundaries? Not in a sweeping sense. It's okay to create flexible boundaries. I'm not talking about having rigid boundaries all the time. Clear, flexible boundaries are important. and Boundaries that adapt to the needs of the circumstance are important. Too often, people release their boundaries or at times will over-rigidify them. And we need a, a healthy balance where you can figure out how do I keep a boundary here that allows me to maintain my autonomy and my health and my well-being? I would argue that uncle being in the picture right now is not good for that. Uncle's not an enabler in this case, Avery. Uncle is a representation of the past. He is a symbol in this case for a life that John is trying to get away from. And these are, these are thoughts that John probably has in his head that he is working to try to reprocess and get through. And Uncle is like this, he's like a fishing rod, reeling him back in. Oh, she's, uh, her and Jack are waiting until I'm set up before joining me out here. <laughs> you mean she left you? Oh, I never thought she was a smart woman, but, you know, this makes me think maybe I was wrong. <laughs> no more of that. Hey. I just bought this place. And you're lucky I'm showing it to you and not looking for a place to bury you out here. Doesn't matter, Joms. If John wants to move on, this conversation with Uncle is enough for me to say, you know what? Go away. Go away. I'm trying to get away from this shit. Like, these are the hard boundaries you have to set if you want to if you want to live a life that you're in control of. Second chance is a flexible boundary. And again, you can do that. John is in a vulnerable spot right now. And if Uncle is, you know, a good friend that he's making himself out to be, Uncle will appreciate the boundary. Or if he's frustrated by it and says to John, well, I ain't going to talk to you anymore, that's his prerogative. But John... You don't owe anybody your presence, your engagement, a relationship. You don't owe anybody that, no matter how good they've been to you. And John letting him in, I just don't think is I don't think is good for him. I really don't. I think it's a something that he is very susceptible to is going to be narratives that draw him back to the past. Because going on and doing something new is difficult to do. It's a vulnerable thing to do. He's going to want something that's consistent, reliable, and what he's used to, and Uncle is that. And everything that Uncle just said in this conversation with him was antagonistic. He's making fun of him for trying to go straight. I don't need that energy in my life. I don't owe Uncle that just because he's been a relatively okay dude in my life. He's not being an okay dude right now. So John kind of reasserted the boundary and said, shut the hell up. You're lucky I'm even showing you this. But again, you know, how long does John want to take this? Even though we look at this house and we think it is super dilapidated, it's not necessarily what we would idealize as a home to live in. We have to step into John's shoes. This is something that John, on his own, went and bought. Did he take a predatory loan from the bank? Yes. But John did it. This is a representation of something for John. This is a symbol of him wanting to make good on his promise to Abigail and to Jack. 
It's something he can work on. It is not cool for anybody, let alone us, to come at this with our own inductive judgment. You want to be a person that people want to have around? Be a person who understands and listens to what things like this mean. I don't know if Uncle's going to do that. But this is a very important moment for Uncle. Because if Uncle shits all over this, get out. If Uncle can find it in him to say, geez, John, you know, I, I'm proud of you for doing this, for making something. You no, know, maybe it didn't go the way you want, but damn, you're trying. Okay. That's the kind of energy I want around me right now, if I'm John. Not the kind of energy that shits all over this. Again, John's in a position of vulnerability here. We have to look at what this means in John's context, not in ours. Great interpersonal skill to develop. What do you think? Why exactly did you buy this dump? For Abigail? Why? Is she an idiot? No. What were you thinking? I don't know. She said she wanted it. She ever seen it? What are we going to farm here? <laughs> Rocks? We? You don't have a hope here without a wise hand at the tiller. Enough of that. Get out of here. On your way. No. You're stuck with me. Seems I'm stuck with you. John, the rock farmer. <laughs> so... You think I'm an idiot? No. I know you're an idiot. Do you want to do different? Want to be pulled back. Uncle is not entitled to this. This is one of those moments where John potentially says to somebody else, well, I couldn't get rid of him, so he's here to stay. No. No. If a person blows through your boundary, you have to escalate. John says, get out. Uncle says, no. John is presented with a choice. Do I show Uncle... That my boundaries are real? Or do I show uncle that he can blow through them? What do I want to reinforce? Because you, as a person who responds to other humans, are a reinforcement mechanism for the humans around you. When John allows uncle to walk into that house, talk shit about it, John has just reinforced undesirable behavior. John has just said, through action, to Uncle, you can strong arm your way into anything you want with me. My boundaries don't matter. That is, that is literally what John just reinforced with him. If John wants to set the boundary, there's a chance that maybe John has to pull a gun on Uncle there. I'm not saying that necessarily has to be the next step, but like if uncle keeps pushing, you pull a gun and say, get out. You are not welcome here. This is not we. I ain't seen you in years. This is me and Abigail and Jack. You are welcome to visit. If you visit, you will not talk shit about this because I am doing my best. 
If you're insecure about your own situation and you're overcompensating with your jealousy by that, by making fun of me, you can fuck right off, buddy. The only way people know your boundaries matter is if you show them that they matter and you follow through with them. It is really hard to watch John do this. I understand it. Very hard. And my, my work with John would be around building distress tolerance for the moments when his boundaries are violated. Like in this case with uncle. How do you differentiate between negative energy and that you don't need versus tough love? Because tough love comes with empathy. Tough love will usually make sense and tough love usually only really works from people that have built up a sense that you can trust what they have to say. Uncle has no karma in the bank with John. Uncle didn't do this with empathy. Uncle didn't say, dude, I get it, right? Like, I and I appreciate it. I understand what you're trying to do. Uncle's not listening to John and then giving his two cents on it and understanding that John's a big boy and doesn't have to listen to him. Like, tough love comes with the caveat that you understand that people don't necessarily have to listen to. It facilitates autonomy while also asserting what one thinks. Negative energy is just shitting all over it because of either your own insecurities or because you don't understand, you don't listen. There's no empathy. It's all judgment. Empathy versus judgment is a really good barometer to understand stuff like that. What Uncle just said to John is not tough love. It's judgmental bullshit. Did John be having trouble sticking to boundaries with uncle since boundaries weren't respected in the gang? Yeah, probably. Uh, he's This is learned behavior. But again, this is where John has to make a decision. Do I want to follow what I'm used to or do I want to do something new? Doing This is a, this whole epilogue is a beautiful illustration of how hard it is for humans to change. It's really hard for us to break out of the things that we have been conditioned into. Immensely difficult. I have a lot of empathy for John and why he's making these decisions. John needs help. John needs to be surrounded by people who can help facilitate this process for him. That's why it's all the more heartbreaking that Abigail's gone. I'm not saying he needs to rely on Abigail. John needs to find some of this stuff out on his own, but John needs help here. He needs to be surrounded by people that help him facilitate this process who could give him some criticism while also showing him that they're proud of what he's trying to accomplish and do. You deal with the hand you have now, it's just John by himself. Sure, he wishes he had his wife and child, but it's just not realistic. No, I agree. It is just John by himself. But John needs to continue to perpetuate that. Bringing uncle in is not a good idea. It is not a good idea. It's a terrible idea. It's terrible energy to have around. In some ways, uncle has Micah energy here. Oh, rock farmer John, I could hear Micah saying that. Is Micah energy really what we want around us right now? No. No. So Arthur could say where he's still alive. Hey, this banker's strassing you let's wait for a better deal yeah he can empathize with what john's trying to do strategize with john invite him into the process not this bullshit i you don't need people like uncle around in your life and i love that he's called uncle because such it's such a beautiful metaphor for the fact that people put up with so much shit from their families especially even as adults that you do not have to put up with just because he's uncle Just because he's uncle doesn't mean he's entitled to having John around. It could be Kiwi, but Rock Farmer John is funny. Mike never said anything funny and wholesome. I strongly disagree. Strongly disagree. Because we have to remember what this means for John. Take the most important thing in your life, all of us right now, if you want to empathize with John, take the most important thing in your life, your biggest goal, 
the thing that you have the strongest conviction of wanting to accomplish for yourself. Now imagine yourself taking the first couple steps for that. Imagine that, right? How that would feel, how vulnerable, how exciting, how different, how anxiety provoking. And then bring in a person from your past who makes fun of you for it and talk shit about it. Is that the energy you want in your life? Because that's what's happening right now. That is what's happening. So is calling him Rock Farmer John funny if it's a person like maybe Arthur who made it all the way through with them and has been with them from the very start, who's just kind of jabbing at him, having a good time? Is that maybe funny? Sure. Uncle has no karma in the bank to draw upon to make that shot. Like, I do not respect Uncle at all for making fun of John in that moment. I just don't. It is, it is antagonistic. Even if he means well. Impact is more important than intent here. Especially if you're John trying to start this new life for yourself. So, Uncle had ample opportunity here. He had ample opportunity here to show that he was different. And he didn't do it. Part two. Okay. Bank loan received four hundred and five dollars. So I got to figure out a way to get four hundred and five dollars. We have a fence. Oh, what else we got going on here? So we have just uncle, huh? Also, I'd like to use this opportunity as we move into part two of the epilogue to say how much I appreciate you all being here. Those of you that are here live, thank you so much for spending some time here and for chatting with me, for asking cool questions, for engaging with each other. It's a lot of fun to have people to hang out with while I do this. If you are watching the VOD and you have made it all the way to part 36, I am really grateful for you. Thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for supporting what I do. I hope you'll tell people about me, especially if these are meaningful runs for you, uh, because you know I want the channel to grow. I want more people to be able to potentially learn something from these playthroughs. So thank you so much for what you do. Please take a second, put a thumbs up on the video if you've enjoyed it. Make sure you follow me on social media if you don't already, links are down in the description. If you have sent me some form of monetary support in the form of a membership by hitting the join button, by tipping by using the link down in the description, or by buying merch by going to drmcmerch.com, thank you very much for supporting my channel in that way. It means the world to me. I will never put the channel behind a paywall, but those of you that do support the stream financially, please know that it makes a huge difference in the stream's life and in my life, and I'm very grateful for it. Much love to all of you, no matter what role you take in supporting this community. I really, really, really appreciate it. Hey, lady. Easy, pancake. Easy. <laughs> Think it's warm enough to grow mangoes here? Yes. Yeah, let's just... We're going to call the ranch Tahiti. Wouldn't that be something? If John was like, all right, we'll name the ranch Tahiti. Making the most of it. Hey, right, Uncle. Working hard. <clears throat> it's the lumbago. Now, if I overdo it, I I'll get a relapse. It's very serious. Get up or get out. Oh, you can be so testy. What is it? Constipation? Guess you're my proof I'll never quite outrun my sins. You got so sanctimonious in your old age. 
No wonder she left you. It's like rooming with the King James Bible. <laughs> Get up! Ow! I, I, I'm getting up. Oh, no, wait, what did I have to tell you? I, I went into town, and oh, I, got, I got a little drunk. Oh, shit! Well, we gotta go. We gotta go to San Denis. Charles! Charles Smith is alive, I reckon. Charles Smith alive? Really? I, I reckon. Unless I dreamed it all, and by the sound of it, not doing too good neither. I'm only going to belabor the point for a second. If I took the name, if I showed you the script, and I took the names out of the script, and I only showed you the dialogue, I bet you a whole bunch of us would listen, would read that and would think that that was an exchange between Arthur and Micah. It's really easy sometimes to miss out on process by looking at who is delivering it and at times, I think it's okay to do that, right? Because different people have different pasts with us and different leverages and different amounts in the, in the relationship bank. But if that's an energy you want to get away from, if it's an energy you couldn't stand between Micah and, and Arthur, then same goes for Uncle here. That's all I'll say about that. Come on, let's get off. All right. <sighs> Back in San Denis. Oh, boy. I never liked this place. Oh, yeah. Oh, me neither. All right. Let's go find that big sour bastard. Sure. <clears throat> let's split up. Good idea. I'll take the saloons. You take the slums. Now, uh, how about I take the saloons and you take the slums? Good night, Skog. Good night, Benita. Try the saloon first. You know, it's disheartening on, to morning, it. I mean, I get why we might be wanting to find Charles, but uh, John just it's sad to me how susceptible John is to influence. Hey, partner. Seen a big Indian guy? Indian? Hm, sure. I've seen hundreds. A big guy. Boxer, maybe? Likes fighting? Yeah, yeah. Bare knuckle guy. Think he's he's fighting tonight over at St. Saturnine's. 
Thank you. Thanks a lot. No problem, bud. Charles C. Nope. I can do that. Uh, it is currently 12.20 a.m., Diesel. I don't want to fight with you! Old Sandini. Lots of memories of Arthur finding out he got tuberculosis here. <laughs> what took you so long? Oh, good lord. I was just beginning to enjoy some peace and quiet. <laughs> Ask that first barman I met. He told me Charles was here. <laughs> Not one of life's great mysteries, Folks, turns out. a surprise, <laughs> but they hate a massacre. And you are a killer. Oh, shit. We both know what you gotta do. I'm leaving now. He don't know the half of it. John? You're... You're... I'm alive. <laughs> so are you. <sighs> So's he. That's uncle? What are you doing? I don't know. I'm alive. Uncle thought maybe he was in some sort of trouble. Uh, kind of. Just... I don't know. I... I'm throwing fights for a few dollars. Throwing fights? Sure. And you like that? Of course not. So... So... Let me go place a bet. Come on. Man, I thought you were dead. Sure. Abigail's still alive, too, only she left me. Uh, excuse me. I'd like to place a bet. <laughs> Look at that. How can you tell who's got respect? Look how quickly John says she left me. John, John didn't want to tell Uncle that at all. He was skirting it around, not not going there, trying to hide it, trying to save face. Charles shows up. We see him for two seconds. John goes, yeah, I was with Abigail. She left me. Uh, Charles has a real presence. He is somebody, I think, that has shown so much integrity that people are so quick to, to trust him. Like that's a, It's a fascinating difference in how John... Talked about that. It's like the fourth thing he says to him. <laughs> Thank you, Pancake. On who? On myself to win. Lone Wolf. How much? All of this. Okay. Funny thing, I pegged you for the favorite, but the odds just got real good. What about you, sir? A uh, little wager on the wolf here? Real redskin brave. I don't want to bet, but okay. Ladies sure, I'm a fan of the wolf. Give me a bet on him. Have I got a treat for you? An epic battle between the descendant of ancient warriors and a not so noble savage on my left. A ferocious battler from the valleys, Simon of Wales. And on my right, an Indian Hercules. The savage, the untamable, the unbeaten, and dare I say unbeatable, Lone Wolf. You know how this works. No weapons, no forfeiting, no crying like a beaten child. Everything else goes. You win by knockout. You win by retirement. Or you win by death. Let's have a good fight, boys. Let's keep it clean, but not so clean. You know what to do, Senor Smith. Forza! Forza! Lone Wolf! What is this? Come on, Simon, hit him! What is this? Knock him out! Go, Lone Wolf! Peel that bastard! Hit him, Charles! <laughs> Oh, oh, he's going to get in trouble here. Come on, Lone Wolf. Got to get you the hell out of here. Hey, Lone Wolf, whoa. How? Made my months, but you also made some fellas mighty unhappy. So it goes. Here's your share, partner. 
If we just made the bed, I said we So you keen on staying around here or heading off with me and Uncle? But, John, I haven't seen you two in years. I know. But right now, my sense is you just need to lie low. Where? We got a little place up past Blackwater in the high country. Okay. I gotta grab my baggage. I booked a steamer heading up river. That's why I was pretending to throw the fight. Okay, boys. I'll meet you at the bridge outside San Denis. What are you doing? Oh, we'll just have a few urns to run. <laughs> You're useless. I am a deep thinker. Be quick. Come on. Hey, 40 bucks. That's not bad. It's 10% of our loan. Uh, my bag's on the dock side. So, what happened? You mean back then? Arthur helped me get out. Gave me a chance to live, I guess. You, you know that Arthur... Sure. Word got to me up north, so I went back and buried him in Miss Grimshaw. Oh, I had wow. To... If any of us had been found, we'd have... Oh, of course. I understand. He's where he would have wanted to be. A pretty hillside, facing the evening sun. He gave me his satchel with some of his things in it. Remember that journal he always drew in? I got it. I'm a bit of a draftsman myself nowadays. He was a good man. As much as any of us could be. Getting sick like that has to rattle a fella. Rattle him or... Give him some kind of understanding what his life was really all about. Yeah. That makes sense. Anyway, I heard all of you were dead. Or I might have come looking. And me, the same about you. Dutch? Who knows? Dead? Maybe? I'm not sure. I heard all kind of things, but one thing I know... He ain't around here. I ain't heard nothing real in years since, well, that time. Nor me, Micah. I hope that bastard's dead. You know, he was the one speaking to them agents. What? Putting them on us the whole time. Or since before I got off Sisica. They picked up Strauss, the agents. Made a real mess of him. I heard he died in custody. Never said a word. <sighs> wow. Guess some folk is strong in ways you can't see. Everything that happened. All those deaths. Micah? None of us is innocent in that. Dutch, least of all. But I don't think we would have had to make those calls. All that mayhem. If it wasn't for... We were on a very bad path. And Micah Bell dragged us into the abyss. Uh. uh hold on. Not that's interesting. Huh. They still can't bring themselves to put full accountability on Dutch. It is amazing that after all of that, they still blame Micah. I understand. It is Micah's fault. He is tipping off the Pinkertons. I, he is absolutely a huge part of why we were in a mess. But it was not all Micah. At all. There is still some of that deeply, deeply rooted and instilled loyalty in these guys not just in the direction of dutch in the direction of each other like essentially informative years as it related to the gang and the group it was forced into them consistently that loyalty is the way and they carry that with them it's why I, to some extent, you can explain why John is keeping Uncle around, why he sought out Charles, why they're not able to get fully around the idea that Dutch had a huge part in this. Micah's disloyalty by ratting them out to the Pinkertons is the antithesis to what the group was all about. Easy for them to look at it and say it was Micah's fault. Dutch 
is a person that they could still somewhat conceptualize as having been loyal to the group. And Micah was the one that was screwing them over, but Dutch was not doing them any favors by the end, as we all know. Just amazing, right, in this language and how they're talking about this. They're not really holding Dutch as accountable. Micah's the scapegoat. He's accountable, don't get me wrong. But he ain't fully accountable. What? Careful. Why? Those are Guido Martelli's men. Who? He, uh, he used to work for Angelo Bronte. Oh, boy. I've only been here an hour. Hey. Uh, Come over here. What now? Well, you go left, I go right. On three. Mm -hmm. Three. <laughs> you couldn't have thrown that fight! It's never good to want to fight! Evidently! Look at those guns they have! Are you kidding? chance we have of uh, denying it at least no we can't get caught martelli has the police chief in his pocket if they take us in we won't get out of the interview room i don't want to get a shootout over this that's not the man i try to be anymore no i don't want that either you see anything <sighs> i think we're clear if i ever want to go back remind me that I hate Saint Denis. Guido Martelli will happily remind you of that. Give me some simple folk and wide open spaces. Speaking of simple. John Charles! <laughs> you boys been off getting up to no good? Kind of. Been getting shot at. Well, they weren't very good shots. Come on, let's head for home. <laughs> Abigail looks smarter and smarter with these decisions. This is why the way everybody was conditioned into the group is so scary, man. Loyalty is going to be John's undoing. It's heartbreaking in a way. Like, I want John. I feel like Arthur. I want John to succeed. I want John to make it so badly. He just needs the right people around him. He needs he needs to somehow draw on his internalized object of Arthur. He needs something to help him be more autonomous. 
it just seems to be too hard of an adjustment for John to make. And surrounding yourself by the old folks is not doing him any favors. I, you know, I love Charles as much as the next person, but even having Charles around at this point, like we could catch up and talk about what happened and say, okay, I'm going to go back to my ranch. He sure did, Red. Sure did. Arthur said, don't look back. This is looking back. They don't really feel different shelves, no. Oh, ties that bind, man. Just new people, Avery. New people. It would probably do John well to even be by himself for a little. John does not know because he hasn't learned how to lead. John has not learned how to be self-directed. He has been a follower for a long time. He was never given a seat at the leadership table. John has to find that for himself. He has to learn how to do it. Being by himself could be a good way to do it. He started to do it. He started to do it when he was on the ranch with the Gettys. Right? He worked hard. He got to a point where he said, you know what? It's time for me to grab the bull by the horns. It's time for me to go to Blackwater, to get alone, and to do my thing. He was on the path. Old influences come back into his life, and he falls right back into the role that he's used to. It's no different than when people go away to college. They gain some autonomy. They start to find themselves. They go home, and they're right back into the role they were in before they left home. It happens to all of us. Like, this is something that happens to all of us. And it, it's just, it's so hard because the, the, these indirect systems are so influential on people when they're trying to make good on change. Sometimes it's what makes my job as a therapist so difficult. Because you got to work with people's old ingrained patterns. It's why learning theory is such an important thing to understand. It's just hard to watch, man. It's just because you you want him, you want him to make it, and he's surrounding himself by an environment that's not going to facilitate that. Ah, feels like old times. <laughs> It's good to have the old gang back together again. Let's just hope things don't turn out like last time. Here he goes. What'd I tell you, Charles? Boy is as sour as weak old milk. No wonder she didn't stay with you. Not even a retired $2 whore would stay with you. That's the goddamn truth. Now, you used to be decent company, but now you're worse than a snake with a toothache. All he does is whine, whine, whine. Excuse me. Y'all, this is painful. This is really painful. Like, this is this is hard to play. Cause now he kind of sounds like Dutch. Uncle wants everything to be how it was. John represents progression, change, and Uncle is trying to fight back for homeostasis. He's trying to get back to the group equilibrium, which is something we talked about however many episodes ago. 
This is exactly what I was afraid of. Antagonize him until he finds it in him to go back to normal. Brutal. Mm. And John... John also never learned to stand up for himself. Think of the times he stood up for himself in the group. He got shut down by Dutch. He got laughed at. See, if John finds it in him to be, like, the self-directed leader that he's capable of being, he, he, he doesn't put up with this shit from Uncle. He, do, he doesn't put up with it. John is in a vulnerable spot. People you have around you when you're in a vulnerable spot are so important. How he got tied up with the Vanderlins in the first place. Now, here we are again. He's in a vulnerable spot. Familiar people come around. They start telling him what to think. They start telling him that his ideas of what he wants to do with his life are dumb and they're against the grain. It's, it's terrible. It's a terrible circumstance for him. Uncle sits around, doesn't do shit, and just antagonizes him. It's me. Oh, don't get all angry. It ain't gonna change nothing. You're hopeless. And I mean that literally. You got no hope. I mean, look at you. Look at this place. Your dream home. I've had better nightmares than this dream. Then leave. Oh, darling Abigail. I've changed. Come live with me in an outhouse. I wouldn't ask my worst enemy to take a shit in. What are you trying to say? It's awful. It's a dump. The house has got to go. Get some self-respect, you miserable sack of shit. Build a house so the lady set foot in. The place just needs a woman's touch. It needs leveling. No woman would touch this place. Now, I reckon these horses can have it down in a minute. Here, come on. Tie that end around the horses. You loop that end around there. Horses will pull it clean down. <laughs> we good? I think so. All right. Well, <laughs> let's get going. Now, just pull. You got this, John? I'll go when you do. Okay. On me. Let's do it. Come on. The dumb animals don't know what to do. And neither do the horses. <laughs> Give me the signal. Good horse. trouble and now now we head into town buy ourselves a house right out of a book same as if it were a bicycle where in town there's a fellow by the train store cakes hardwood and timber okay you keep working here but if i don't go with you who's gonna just tell you need that? a bit of peace and quiet from your incessant yapping charles make him work whip him if you have to <clears throat> Do I hit? Okay, my only frustration. This isn't a terrible idea. This isn't a terrible idea. But did we did we talk about how much this was going to cost? Did we problem solve this? There are better ways to make your point okay, than to be antagonistic. Yes. Like I I I, I could get I could get on board with this. Uh, uh, where am I going? I 
Am I going to Blackwater? What the hell? I'm so confused. Where the hell am I going? Good job, lady. It's true. I mean, we we can improve. I hope the loan's okay with that, though. Like, I hope the bank is cool with what we just did. Lord knows whether it will be. We will find out. Oh shit. Oh. I wasn't paying attention. Ah, I'm sorry, sir. I was not paying attention. Hey, I please remind you all. Do not back seat. I have been very clear. There are two rules here. Do not back seat, do not spoil. Not hard. Really not. I appreciate those of you that do not spoil in backseat. I totally just violated that dude's boundary. I should have left. I wasn't paying attention. Hmm. I did. I did, Daniel. I'm not proud of it. That's an awfully familiar looking horse. All right, so we got Sadie here. Damn powerful. Oh, do I talk to Sadie? Howdy, friend. Uh. Howdy there. Correct, Solar. All right. I'm Hello. interested to see what we got here. Hello, welcome. A little self care, 50 cents. I can afford that. Can I get a ticket, please? Through the doors behind you, please. Chat. Direct current damnation. Electricity is the great wonder of the age. But not all electricity is equal. Alternating current is safe. Direct current is dangerous. Direct current is a deadly menace. <laughs> <laughs> Direct
direct current wipes out the ignorant. Is this a public service announcement? I think that's what I was buying a ticket for. Oh no! Which would you prefer in your home? An evil menace strong enough to kill an elephant? Or a calm gift from the gods that provides light and warmth? Alternating current lights our homes and warms our baths. <laughs> Alternating current slims our bellies and calms our women from hysteria. Oh my God. <laughs> this message has been brought to you by the Atlantic Electric Company. The end. I literally just wasted 50 cents on a advertisement. Public service. Not a fan. Boo. Ooh! I want my money back. You win some, you lose some. A waste of my money, sir. Come back for another one. No, I don't think I will. Does John have no self-respect for himself? I mean, look at that shack. Would camp outdoors Hello, and live. In uh, Mason, I don't know if you saw the part where we bought the house and walked up to it, but I do think John does. I think he has people around him trying to cut down his self-respect because they see it as a threat. All right. Oh, it's all good, Mason. All right. I reckon that's probably a good place to stop. Uh, VOD Watchers, thank you so much for coming out for part 36. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that my analysis continues to bring some level of depth to the game and maybe helps you enjoy it in a way that you haven't before. If this is your first time going through the game, thanks for making me the person that you watched for the first time with means a lot uh make sure you like the stream make sure you follow turn on notifications i'm live at 9 30 p.m pacific time every night except for monday i hope you'll stop by sometime while i'm live it's great fun having so many people here to hang out with and again leave a comment if you have any thoughts i would love to hear it uh i do read them i don't respond to all of them but i do read them so appreciate you all very much thank you for coming out and i'll catch you on part 37.